it's a common problem. Employees may not be performing at their required level, but the manager doesn't know how to go about providing feedback to them. The manager comes to you at HR hoping to pass on the problem. How can you use this as an opportunity to coach them on giving feedback back to their staff member? Eleanor, why do managers avoid giving feedback? I think it's fairly simple. They're scared of making mistakes and they're scared of the consequences of those mistakes. And specifically what they're often scared of is a reaction that they don't know how to handle. So there's two main things people would be scared of. One is the aggressive outburst mm -hmm. and secondly, the person who bursts into tears and can't cope with receiving the feedback. And in both cases, what's happening for the manager is they're petrified that they're going to trigger that negative reaction. And the more they dwell on that, the less likely they are to be able to work out how to deliver the feedback in a constructive way. So what are the techniques that you can actually teach uh, managers on how to, on the feedback traps to look out for? Well, the first thing is to be aware that often managers make feedback so nice that the employee doesn't realise that they've actually received feedback. So the subtle hint technique, where you say it'd be really good if perhaps someone around here tried changing the way that they did the filing. The message is so vague mm -hmm. that the staff member doesn't realise that it's meant for them. So the first skill is to teach managers to actually be clear and specific without coming across as abrupt and hostile. And that's all about teaching them how to focus on behaviours and to explain, I need a change in what you're doing. And here's some things that I've noticed that are happening right now that will be really easy for you to change. Okay. And so what are the other traps to look out for? Um, so another trap would be being too general in your feedback. So saying you've got a attitude problem instead of saying I noticed that when you were talking to a customer yesterday you cut them off and because it was five o'clock you packed your bag and got out of the room as quickly as possible rather than following up on their inquiry. If you say there's an attitude problem A the staff member doesn't know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and B they're likely to hear that as hostile. If you say that you noticed a set of behaviours hanging up on the customer as quickly as possible and then not following up, it's really clear to them what actually happened. Mm. And so it's much easier for you to request a change. Okay, so how would you uh, coach a manager through this and to avoid these kind of situations? So you need to help them to focus on clear and specific information. Okay. It sounds really, really simple to us in HR because we do this all mm. the time. Mm. But for a manager to actually go from Eleanor's got bad timekeeping habits mm. to Eleanor turned up late for work three days consecutively this week can be a big leap. And so one of the techniques that you can do is actually teach them to write down what am I seeing here, which is usually their interpretation, and then exactly what happened that led me to reach the conclusion about the staff member. And then get them into the habit of actually talking through what they observed, what mm -hmm. they saw the person do, or what they heard, rather than their generalisation. Okay, excellent. What else can go wrong, in your experience, Eleanor, with managers giving feedback to their staff members? So sometimes managers fail to follow up. In fact, often managers fail to follow up. So they'll come to me as a coach and they'll say, but I've given them feedback and they never changed. Mm. And when I turn around and say, and so what did you do about that? They go, well, nothing. And I say, well, it takes a little bit of time for someone to change. If they didn't change in the first week, it's your responsibility to give them more feedback. But did you actually notice if they did ever try to change? And did you reinforce it if they did? So what's really important is that managers observe once they've given feedback and try to catch people doing something new. Give them praise. They might try to do something and it doesn't work, but at least they've changed their behaviour. Mm. So give them that affirming feedback. And then when they manage successfully, make sure that you're there to give them some praise. If they haven't made a change within the first week, then follow up with them. And if you're a good manager, you'll be having a meeting with every staff member every one to two weeks anyway. So use that opportunity to talk through what's happened. Excellent advice. And now how else can HR professionals actually support managers in giving feedback? 
So HR pro uh, professionals can do a range of things like coaching, obviously, sending people for training and giving them access to resources like videos and tip sheets. And you can find a lot of those on my website designed specifically to help managers work out what to say and how to frame their message in a way that's not going to inflame a situation. Eleanor, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us again today. It's been incredibly insightful and useful, and it really is about helping managers build the skills that they need before they actually need them. Now, we're going to be catching up again next month. What are we going to be speaking about? Next month, we're looking at what to do if you're giving feedback to someone and they start crying. <laughs>